what's happening YouTube how's everybody doing today uh, just got the fish in the tank you can't see them because they all hide behind the rock the Sun is setting so I'm getting that funky blue that my camera doesn't pick up there are the clowns curl beauty kind of hides in this area right here I did lose what was the female coral beauty she was sickly I tried that freshwater dip I only dipped her for five minutes and then I put her from the dip into the big tank and I did her first next morning she was dead so I just transferred everybody else without dipping them if they still have any issues I will take care of it here but that is not what the video is about today I'm going to be doing a auto top off system with a float switch and that's what we're going to talk about so let's go in the garage where I have everything set up and I'll run you through the parts okay so here we are let's go over the parts now this is only going to be a temporary top off system for me I'm eventually going to get a pressure switch that uh, a liquid fill pressure it's going to uh, feel the pressure and that's what's going to control on and off this is a float switch I got that's going to go into the make of water reservoir and it's going to be like an emergency cutoff for the pump so I don't run the pump dry but I am tired of topping it off and my controller project is way behind schedule so we're just going to stick this in temporarily uh, I'm going to have to do this build anyway for it and uh, I'll move it once I get going with that pressure sensor anyway I just got myself a float switch I got the duck bill kind uh, basically I heard that these are less likely to stick now something I've, I have uh, seen on YouTube is that everybody just splices those right into an extension cord uh, you gotta be careful doing that because a lot of them especially the ones on eBay are rated for DC power only and so what you'll do is you'll fry it out and it'll work one time and then the next time it opens boom it'll never shut off so make sure you know what your float switch is rated I didn't see very many for AC truthfully uh, for alternating current that is but I guess there's some out there because every YouTube video I've ever seen nobody uses a relay and that's what I'm gonna have to use right here is a 9 volt relay and what a relay does is that you connect on two terminals here you connect a DC a direct current supply and then you can connect on two other terminals your uh, alternating current supply and so it kind of bypasses so the float switch will tie into the DC power this is a 9 volt relay this is my 9 volt direct current supply I had one laying around so when I was picking out a relay I knew I had this so I just got a 9 volt relay you can get 12 volt relays 5 volt relays whatever direct current power supply you have at work this is just a piece of plexiglass that I'm going to use to mount it I'm going to just heat it up and bend it so it'll fit over the tank I already pre-drilled a slot and I pre-drilled a long one so the float switch I'll have I'll be able to move that up and down I already told you I had the 9 volt power supply to, to uh, power the relay basically what that does this will hook into this and that will flip the switch for the cord so you just basically need an extension cord or some other power supply to pump to plug your pump into and then it's always helpful to have a multimeter and I'll show you why here shortly you like this try to get all cute by putting a hole up top for the wires that I didn't really need and busted it all the crap luckily I have some acrylic cement and Frankenstein it all back together it, it should work just not pretty anymore no big deal but that'll sit on the tank like that float switch will fit through here and should work now let's get on with the wiring okay first let's start off with the relay a little bit when you get a relay they come in all different shapes sizes or what have you but on this particular relay like I said it's a 9 volt relay shot of that there for you all out there but it's a 9 volt relay and on the bottom side you'll see three prongs on this side and two on the other now the middle prong is for your uh, alternating current 
these two back prongs are the switch so right now the switch is pointed to one of the two prongs we're going to figure out which one that is here in a second and then these two on the outsides in the front go through the coil that activate the switch so let's go over that and find out which pole is open and which pole is closed okay so how I'm going to figure out which side is open and which side is closed is I've got it hooked up to my multimeter here and I've got it on the continuity setting and then I've got the red probe on the center pole like I said which is part of the switch and then you just touch with the other probe okay so the left side is closed and the right side as you can hear is open so what we want to do is we want to connect the AC current here where the red probe is and then on the closed side so that way anytime the DC triggers it'll open so we'll put this probe here and I'll, sh I'll demonstrate that okay so I plugged in my 9 volt DC converter into the wall I've got the multimeter probe on the center pole and on the normally closed pole and then when I touch this terminal you can all you can hear it click and the switch comes on so when the DC voltage goes through there it'll flip the switch open okay so I had to move the project indoors here um, I have soldered on these terminals to the pins I need. A uh, little plug-ins would have been better, but I had these on hand, so I just soldered them in place. As I said before, these two outsides are going to control the DC power, which controls the switch back and forth. I've already put in place, here's the DC converter. I moved it in here because I got to solder it all in place because of the lack of room. It's really tight. So I've already, uh, I've already crimped in and soldered in the uh, positive side of the DC converter. Now what I'm going to do is I've got the switch in place. So you take one of the switch wires, and that's going to go, that's going to go into this terminal, and then the other switch wire is going to connect to this side of the DC converter. So the switch is in between these two. So let's get that done. Okay, so here's the completed DC circuit. Power comes through from the converter, comes through and hits here. When the switch flips on, that'll open it up. Let's give it a test here. So it comes through, goes through the switch. Okay, so the DC is hooked up and working flawlessly. Now time to hook up the AC. So the alternating current side, get yourself a uh, extension cord that has these two braids on it. Um, and then you just splice the one. Now I broke this a while ago, so I just repaired it, but I'm this is the neutral side that is one continuous. I'm choosing the hot side or the positive side and you just uh, plug one into the center pole here and then the other over there. Okay so now I've got the AC hooked up this terminal and that terminal and just to, and it's I got it plugged into this light down here just to test it. Off, um, off, um. so we're working now let's make it pretty and put it in place. So many times I make it pretty and get everything in place before I make sure it works. Well, we're working, so let's get it hooked up and set up so I don't have to top this thing off anymore. I have to advocate this. This is some great stuff. You can get, get it at any Home Depot or Menard. It's called liquid tape. Just use that to cover all the connections to, so they don't corrode. I'm gonna wrap this in electrical tape eventually 
as it dries and then mount it somewhere up in there. But because of the salt water in the air, you don't want that to corrode. So this elect liquid electrical tape comes in handy. Highly recommend using that. Okay, so I gotta say I'm pretty pleased with that result. On the first shot, I just missed my mark. Worked like a charm. Uh, as you can see, it just filled it just a hair over where it should be. Uh, I keep my tank at about 1.25, 1.025, sorry, specific gravity. And it raised it up a little bit above that. So I lowered the switch down to the lowest setting and we'll see how it goes. I didn't show you guys the reservoir. Reservoir's down here. It's a lot of glare, but as you can see, I got a seven gallon container down here. Currently have six gallons in there. And that will, that flows up and goes into the first chamber. And uh, it's only that one little area. That leaves me these two cupboards for electrical I have in the center. And then over here I have my tests uh, and food and, and such over in the far right. While I have this off, let's go over my sump really quick. I didn't make too many changes, but I put the sponges in here as well as over here in this thin chamber i've got the sponges i want to keep those in there in case something happens or if i get a new fish i can just pull those out and those will be bacteria filled and i can use those in the filter for the quarantine tank so i'm going to keep those in there i also have uh, some purigen in here on top of the sponges i've got two bags of chemi pure elite i've got one bag here in the last stage and I've got one here in the first stage so it, it over it overflows here down goes through the first bag of chemi pure skimmer still in the back still off because uh, my old my algae scrubber is doing such a great job of keeping the nitrates and phosphates undetectable on my tests I know that there is some in there but the API tests are showing undetectable for both and it's keeping algae out of my tank. Still have the chato going. It was dying. I cut off all the dead pieces. But that's it. I am so happy to not have to fill this by hand anymore. There's no more bucket over here. No more quarantine tank over here. Everything is becoming self-contained again. So until next time, everybody. Do it yourself. Auto top off. The most important thing I wanted to bring about of this build is that the relay, that little relay, uh, nobody seems to mention it in their videos, that that's pretty much necessary. So have a good one y'all, we'll see you next time.